first glance, Encho Systems is not very special. However, could they be a possible tech underdog? Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Technology has been on a tear for the last year, and so many companies have done very, very well. Unfortunately, Encho Systems was not one of them. In fact, their share price struggled over the first half of last year, and even though it has been doing better in the second half, there's not a lot to get excited about. Hmm, or is there? Ange House Systems, based out of Markham, Ontario. They've been around since 1984. They are a prominent Canadian software and services company that specializes in delivering enterprise-oriented software solutions across a variety of vertical markets. They operate through two main business units, the Interactive Management Group and the Asset Management Group. In their Interactive Management Group, they focus on transforming contact centers and enhancing visual communications globally through well software and services. In their asset management group, they develop technology solutions aimed at communications, media, utilities, defense organizations, and more. They facilitate their digital transformations through advancements in everything from 5G and cloud computing to the Internet of Things and AI technologies. This is a company in the right niche for some massive growth, but it appears to have only just begun to materialize. We really need to deep dive this one to see what is going on under the hood and to find out if they truly can be an underdog set to explode. Join today's conversation. Let me know in the comments if you currently hold any Canadian tech stocks. Thank you for your participation. If you love this sort of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more and another huge thank you for that click. One of the best parts when it comes to researching these deep dives is finding a company that initially looks like a bad investment, but then discovering that the data has a different story to tell. Could this just be one of those stories? Can Enghaus Systems be that tech underdog we mentioned at the top of the video? Well, to find that out, we are going to have to deep dive into their numbers. And as usual, to do all of that, we are going to have to call on our good old buddy, Mr. Math. We will begin with some surface data. They have a current value at the time of recording of $34.65. Their market cap is coming in at $1.92 billion, and they have a beta of 0.72. So they're basically 25% less volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share come in at 1.31, and they have a price to earnings ratio of 26.50. Now the average amongst their peers is actually a little bit higher. Well, a lot higher, 52.7. This could be an indication that they are undervalued. If we look at those pairs, we do see quite a range of PE ratios from Tiny at 22.3, uh, Computer Modeling Group at 29.8, and Topicus.com way up at 94.1. That huge value of Topicus.com is skewing this data up, so that is something we do want to keep in the back of our mind. They have a price to book ratio of 3.50. The average amongst those same pairs comes in at 12.7. Now, let's take a look at their return on equity, that comes in at 13.59%, and their return on assets, that comes in at 7.14%. This is a good, this ROA is a great number. Overall, there is nothing too concerning about this surface data. It does look okay. Let's pull back another layer and take a gander at their cash situation. They have a revenue of 454.02 million, and their earnings come in at 72.25 million. Those earnings are projected to grow by 12.2%. 26% per year. And in addition to the earnings growing, their EPS is also predicted to grow at a slightly higher rate of 16.9% per year. That is definitely something I do like to see. Profit margin wise, that comes in at 15.9%. Now, this profit margin is down from the previous year when it was coming in at 22.1%. It is not a lot. And considering their last financials came out in October, a good part of their positive reversal is not reflected in that data. When it comes to cash flow, they have a free cash flow of 114.24 million and their operating cash flow that comes in at 115.30 million. That looks okay. Let's take a look at their fair value. So their current value comes in at $34.65. If we use a discounted cash flow model, we do get a fair value of $57.93. That means that they're undervalued by 40.2%. When we look at that one year target, the analysts are predicting a year from now they should have a share price 
of $39.33. So that is an increase of 13.5%. Looking at the cash overall, there is once again nothing very alarming in this picture. We have good cash flow. The only real concern is that drop in profit margin. We now need to dive a little bit deeper and look at their return data where I already know we have some concerns. We will start with their dividends. They have a yield of 2.54%. It is a quarterly dividend of 22 cents per share. Payout ratio on that dividend is 61.83%. So that is definitely sustainable. Switching over to those returns. On the three year, their price fell from $56.07 to $34.65. So that's a return on investment of negative 38.20%. Factor in the dividends, we get a total return of negative 34.20%. 32%. Tech did fall hard into the bear market. So this is not surprising at first glance. However, with the boom in the tech sector in the last year, I would have expected to see this value, well, muted a little more than that. Obviously, if we look at that one year, we still have some trouble. They fell from $42.42 to $34.65. So that is a return on investment of negative 18.32%. And factoring in the dividends, the total return is negative 16.32%. The one year is concerning, as you would have expected it to be positive if this company was benefiting from the sector's recovery. There is one silver lining in this data. If you look at their last five months, their share price has recovered by 21%. This is fantastic and could be an indication that they are just late to the party. As it often does, this deep dive is really going to come down to their debt. So without any further ado, let's peel back that last layer and look at their debt situation. They have a total debt of, well, zero, zilch, nada, a goose egg. This is great. Their total equity comes in at 555.33 million, meaning their debt to equity ratio, yeah, zero, zilch, nada, all of that stuff. Is there a way I can love a zero debt to equity ratio anymore? Well, well, yes, there is. And that is when they had debt five years ago and got rid of it. That is the case here as their debt to equity ratio was 0.5% just five years ago. So even as they were struggling, they cleaned that debt right out. That's not too shabby. Now, when it comes to cash and cash equivalents, they got some of those too, 240.36 million. Holy banana bread. They have more than enough resources to power a nice recovery. Let's look at that short term. On the short term, they have assets of 349.37 million and liabilities of 197.50 million. That looks great. On the long term, their assets come in at 430. 4.30 million liabilities of 30.84 million. I cannot complain at all. I love this debt situation. There is not a single thing I can say I can say negative here. Well done, Eng House. Okay, let's get to that big question. What is my final verdict? The first thing I looked at for this company was their five-year growth chart. And I was honestly not impressed as I had higher expectations for a tech company. However, this was going to become a do not judge a book by the cover moment. And I'm glad that I dove into that data. This is a company with good cash flow and no debt. They have solid fundamentals. And I do agree with the models that say they are undervalued. This is a company that is due some solid growth. And that is going to make them into a very decent total return stock going into that, uh, well, into the bull market. For passive income investors, this is probably not a stock that will excite you as they, as they don't have a huge dividend at all. However, for you total return and growth investors, this one has a lot of potential and they could very well be that tech underdog that we weren't looking for. This stock could be a very nice surprise. If you are interested in the stock we looked at today, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard-earned money on the table. Let's continue that learning journey by checking out this video on tech ETFs. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.